<laughs> we got stuck here, so we're almost to Golden Rooster Mountain. This year, Golden Rooster is like such a sad place. We were here like three days before the tea season started. We were already late, but this tea season was, um, uh, you know, was late this year. And then we went back to uh, some other place, and now we're coming back. We left like 7 a.m. We're supposed to get here in four hours. Now it's 4 p.m., like almost 5 p.m. We got stuck here. The weather is really bad. The road condition is even worse. So uh, I have no experience of uh, how to handle this situ kind of situation. So I'm just going to give it a try. Uh, I'm just going to stick this in there. Hopefully it'll, uh, you know, see if it's going to work. So our last boat for this vehicle could not get on either. This vehicle is a little more narrow. Uh, in the villages, there are lots of these kind of vehicles for this kind of road condition. But uh, apparently he cannot do it either. <laughs> Shit. Oh! <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh my god. All of our stuff on the car. I guess we'll have to be on our foot. Uh, shit. Uh, so, uh, I'm right now. I'm at the home of the most famous uh, uh, yellow tea of China uh, called Jinshan Yingzhen. Uh, this is an island. This is the Jinshan island of Yueyang. Now, uh, what makes the tea so rare? Not only because of all the historical uh, reasons, the cultural, the making techniques, which definitely is one of the most protected and rare techniques of tea making in China, uh, but because this is actually an island tea. Uh, so, the size of the land is very limited. Uh, the primary tea season kind of has passed already, but uh, the, the overall tea season is still here. So uh, you can see the bit picked of tea already, uh, but they continue to bud and then they'll probably pick these um, and make them into green teas. Uh, I was here many years ago and at the time I did not know that this is an island that nobody uh, lives on anymore. So I actually got stranded on the island uh, last time when I was here. It was it was uh, it was a quite adventure. So uh, this time I'm prepared. I came here, uh, you know, uh, early during the day, and hopefully I'll get off the island. Now the the tea here are all uh, still state owned. Uh, so the the making of the tea is state is government organized. Um, the however there are private companies that uh, the contract now that are able to sell the teas. Uh, but this tea is definitely very rare. And then to be honest, because uh, how under recognized yellow tea is in China now this is the most famous yellow tea in China and uh, a lot of the these leaves are actually getting picked to make into green tea. Um, even the yellow tea like this time I come here it becomes yellower uh, green even the yellow tea becomes greener and greener which is kind of sad. And uh, yeah, you can see that this is the yard. Now, now this is uh, the island tea. It's not that tall. Uh, all the I wouldn't even call it mountains anymore. It's all just really hilltops. Uh, we're at one of the highest points, and this is like about like 65 meters uh, above sea level. The uh, because it's in the middle of a lake, um, it's very foggy, very humid. It's actually one of the uh, most humid places I've been to on this tea trip. So uh, we're now uh, inside the room where they actually pick the uh, Jinshan Yinzhen. Jinshan Yinzhen, by, by the way, Jinshan is the name of the island, and Yinzhen means silver needle. That's why I mean like sometimes the name of the uh, the tea does not suggest what kind of tea it is. It's called silver needle, but it's actually yellow tea. Now this is the, uh, is the most rare Chinese tea. I would say the most rare, not even just like not even just the most rare yellow tea, but the most rare tea. Now, uh, this is the one that is good, So this is the variety it's called Bixiangzao. And then, uh, and also if it's a half, if it's broken, um, they don't want it either. So, uh, remember this is the tea when it's like this. It's not like when the tea opens up and the butt comes out. That's why the, 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 the hair, if you see. Oops, do I look? I want to open peel that one. So this is the tea, right? And we call it the inside hair. So we open it up, see the inside has hair. Because it hasn't opened up yet. If, if this one opens up, it becomes the leaf. Uh, and also we clarify one thing, all the uh, private companies that sells, uh, uh, remember this is state owned, so all the private companies that are selling uh, Jinshan Yinjin outside, uh, 
are not the real one. They do not sell them to uh, private brands. Uh, too drunk might be the first one. Uh, we're back to uh, go to Rooster Mountain and uh, this is a batch of uh, handmade Huang Yan. Uh, excuse my attire, but uh, in case you uh, didn't know, we, uh, uh, we started out six uh, like the morning and seven this morning. And uh, we just got here not long ago. It's a long, long journey. We uh, our car broke down. Uh, we were out of gas. We got lost, and then our car got uh, 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 It's like 200 kilometers, but it's like an hour of it was 10, 11 hour drive. But anyway, so now we're back, and. Um, so most of the Huang Yad now is very good at Rooster Mountain, which is the most desired place for Huang Guo. But what we're going to do is we're going to hand steer fry them. So you can see it's a very small batch every time, right? Uh, it's basically a handful. Uh, they can't even give you like a uh, like a quantitative name, uh, a measurement for it, but it's just a handful of the meat. Uh, as they steer fry the tea, the color becomes whiter and whiter. Uh, now this lady here, <laughs> this is the mother-in-law uh, of the daughter in the household. Last year, uh, she made all the teas for us. She's a she's a she's a tea making master actually. <laughs> I was so, so I was like, they're like, make sure your hand is flat. I was like, what if I touch, actually touch the wall? Because the key is to make sure you always land your hand on the key. Um, so even though it looks like it's sweeping the wall, but the mission is so accurate that it actually does not touch the wall. Um, and if you touch the wall, you're gonna you're just gonna sizzle your skin. So I'm like, how can you do that? It just takes practice. And they said after you burn a few times, you'll be fine. I was like, okay, but I did not want to get burned a few times. Now the second step after uh, kill the green, uh, this is making shape. This is uh, this is harder than the first step. I'm sort of mastering it. I hope you can see that the tea is uh, becoming uh, straighter, sort of. <laughs> Oops. Um, forming like a shape in my hand. So, uh, actually, I do it better this way. If I was told this way, it's, uh, I'm, good. I'm getting tired really easy this way. Like, I should stay away from flipping the tea this way. It's not going to last long. Like, I should really try to do it uh, the other way, like this way. But it's, it's a lot harder this way. And also, um, so when I do this, the tea supposed all like line up uh, when I flip it. And of course, I need to make sure that I grab all the tea in turns so uh, no tea stay behind. And eventually, I need to be able to scrape the tea up with the edge of my palm. I'm not able to do that yet. See, uh, basically what he, she's doing uh, in the walk is that like she's also trying to uh, flatten the tea even though it's handmade. But by doing that, uh, you let the tea leaves fall in place and uh, it's supposed to uh, uh, become a little flatter. Uh, sorry, I should, I should use the word straight. Uh, it'll become a little straighter if you let the tea leaves fall that way. Uh, we see this uh, similar step that people use to... Uh, uh, when we're making pu'er. Uh, however, it happens uh, after the pu'er has been uh, stir fried. And then after a while, she needs to loosen up the tea to make sure that uh, the heat gets distributed evenly. And also, I want to point out that these blocks, even though it looks uh, very similar to uh, a lot of the hand uh, uh, green tea steer uh, hand uh, made green tea uh, walks. However, this is very unique because it's actually powered by charcoal. It's not log fire, it's not electricity, it's actually charcoal, which is the most preferred. And of course, it adds to the cost as well because, especially this region, it's uh, um, uh, to protect its natural resources, it's actually not allowed to uh, make charcoal in this region, so um, we have to buy charcoal. Tried to steer fry a batch of tea. I'm so scared because the son of the household <laughs> he burned himself. He has two uh, um, burn marks on his hand. <laughs>
Let's we'll see, because the tea is so little, so uh, it's gonna, so it doesn't cover myself. Uh, it doesn't offer enough protection for me. So the very beginning, when we stir fry the tea, you basically uh, only want to loosen the tea up. It's getting hotter now. Oof. It was not as hot earlier. <laughs> because the wok is really hot, I gotta make sure that when I go through it, my hand only touch the tea, but not the wok. You like to And I want to show you why uh, it is so hard to uh, uh, cook tea with charcoal fire. So you have to uh, constantly adjusting the charcoal to make sure the uh, the heat gets distributed evenly. If it's electricity, uh, then it's much easier. Uh, so now, uh, uh, after I already sort of mastered the uh, stir frying step uh, when I was cooking the tea in the wok, now I'm learning how to bake tea. I think I'm doing pretty good. It's basically baking tea looks easier because you're basically just waiting, but it's actually a little harder. Um, only the master can do this step, and the, the last step, the drop step, is even harder because it's all purified feeling. We just have to keep feeling the heat. So uh, now we need to flip it. It's kind of hot. <laughs> now, there are a lot of uh, pro with uh, using bamboo to cook tea. Uh, it has elasticity, it's more natural, it's, uh, it adds a good sweet flavor to the tea. However, one of the big con of using bamboo is that tea leaves get stuck. Now this is the most traditional way of baking tea. Throughout all tea regions, uh, whatever the tea is made, what give it a white tea, uh, green tea, yellow tea, uh, oolong tea, this is the most traditional way with a charcoal bowl and then a bamboo bucket like this. However, you need to flip the tea more often. So I want to flip it just because I distribute the tea this way. And now we dis redistribute the tea to make sure that uh, the heat gets distributed evenly. If the tea gets stuck on the bamboo, of course it's going to get burned. And also the reason I'm taking it off the charcoal bowl to uh, uh, do the step is uh, another risk is if any tea actually falls onto the bucket, it's going to become smoke and it's going to damage the flavor of the tea. I want to distribute it to make sure the heat gets to really See the charcoal bowl? Um, this is the batch of tea that's been stir fried by these two people here and now it's going to be baked for the first time. This is charcoal <laughs> baked. This is like the most traditional way of making tea. It's so labor intense. Uh, it's going to take, it's, they're going to make tea all the way to, uh, to 3 a.m. today. So it's very different from the, the machine batch, which is large quantity. Yeah, That's yeah. also, you know, largely contributes to the price of the tea. <laughs> he needs to uh, constantly flip the tea. We'll see that yeah. in a second. Uh, so even for handmade tea, they try to uh, make it a little straighter. As you can see, it's less straight. It's still kind of moist, even though it's uh, basically dry. And now this is a batch of. Uh, this is a batch of uh, uh, machine-made tea. Of course, this being also uh, a lot of manufactured tea, what they do is they actually uh, 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 do the last step, which is called uh, the second day after they made the final tea. But what we do is we actually wait until the tea moist up again and then do the final step, which is the right way to do. Uh, as you can see, the color is different. See, this one is still a little greener, a little whiter, right? And after you let it sit for a little, few days, it becomes a little yellower. Okay. And this is straighter, this is uh, a little more curly. So now after uh, about 3-5 minutes, he uh, is flipping the tea. So we redistribute the tea again to make sure that it's uh, uh, the heat 
gets destroyed evenly among the tea leaves. The reason that he's flattening the tea is uh, to also make sure that the shape stays in place because tea naturally tr tends to curl up. The ones that doesn't curl up is usually the older leaves and that's also a, a trick of telling the, the quality of the picking if you look at the, a batch of dry leaves. So uh, 15 minutes, it gives you that batch of uh, uh, stir fried tea, and then another 15 minutes give you this, and then the last step drunk will takes about four hours. Uh, now this is the batch of the onion that's being uh, finished off. It's the final step of drunk uh, This is a very determining step to uh, uh, the tea's final flavor, especially being the raw one and the spread. No, I think you're the master of uh, this last time. <laughs> <laughs> She's being a little shy. Uh, last year, uh, uh, she personally uh, did all of our tea as well. Um, now, this is about three pounds of tea. It's uh, again the energy. Um, the, 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 uh, she needs to flip it now. So every uh, once in a while, she needs to flip the tea. Every time after uh, she finished the jumbo step, her um, hair and her eyebrows are covered by uh, tea hair. Um, because you want to, so this is obviously a charcoal bowl. And um, uh, it's very important to control the temperature of the tea. You see, she's like flipping the tea. Um, it's very hairy, so all the hair will land on her. It's only about three pounds of tea. Uh, the reason it's a dome shape is because uh, the center is where the temperature is the highest. So, uh, uh, so it's raising up to uh, lower the temperature of the center, and then uh, this the the, uh, the edge is being lowered to increase the temperature to make sure that the, both the center and the edge has the same temperature. Um, it's really hard. So these are all like little, like hand craftsmanship. So it's really hard to, to give you the exact temperature. You just really play it by ear. Um, usually when you ask the farmers about like uh, actual measurements of things, they think that they, are, they will always tell you that it's by feeling. Um, if you uh, notice all the cooking here is done by lock fires where as well there's no uh, uh, dial to uh, adjust the temperature and it's all uh, played by, by feeling and then uh, it's, it actually tastes much better. <laughs> Look how fast she goes. You know what this is? This is sugar cane. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there are kung fu masters everywhere in China. <laughs> Look at that. It's sugar cane.